It's the start of what I'm calling dessert timber. All December long, I'm going to be doing some sweet treats. And if you've been looking for a new kind of cheesecake, I've got the perfect solution for you here. This is my apple crisp cheesecake. So creamy and delicious and full of fall flavors. But if you're not in the mood for fall flavors, you can use any fruit that you like. But I'm using apple today. So if you'd like to see how this is done, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now, if you think I'm sounding particularly sultry today, it's because I have a little bit of a cold or something, not even a cold, it's just affecting my throat. And hopefully it won't give me too many issues, but Today, we are making one of my recipes and I'd actually forgotten about this recipe until I got a reminder from Facebook that two years ago I had shared this on Instagram and Facebook. And I thought, oh my God, I've got to do that, especially since it's still fall technically, but you don't even have to do this as a fall dish. You can change up the fruit. You don't have to stick with apples as I'm doing it. You could do a blueberry crisp, strawberry crisp, Cranberry crisp might be good for Christmas coming up. So you don't have to stick with apples. This is just what I made it as the first time. It's what I'm gonna go by. And it will be in the recipe that you can change it up. If you're using berries or something, I would probably go for about a cup to a cup and a half of berries. But for me, there's zero bites, zero points. So I don't mind if I go a little over on the berries. But speaking of going over, let's go over these ingredients. I have here my cooking spray because I'm going to spray. I have a nine inch pie plate here that I'm going to spray with cooking spray. I have here 16 ounces of my light homemade cream cheese. Now, if you have not seen the video where I make that, I did do my very first video, which was an introduction to myself. And I showed how to make this cream cheese out of Greek yogurt. It's really simple and it's been around for a while, but I just tweaked it a little bit to my satisfaction. But if you have not seen that, I will card that up here. I also separated that piece out for tutorial just in case you were looking for only the cream cheese. So I will link both of those videos down below. I have here one third cup of quick cooking oats. Now you want quick cooking for this recipe just because it's not going to be in the oven for too long and you also don't want big chunks of oatmeal in your crisp. I mean you could if you want to but I prefer having the smaller bits of oats and if you don't want to go out and buy quick cooking oats and you already have old-fashioned oats just chop them up on a cutting board for a little bit. That's all you really need to do. Quick cooking just means they're cut into smaller pieces so as long as you cut them into smaller pieces you could do it in a little food processor but I would just blend it like very quick bursts and you don't want it to get too fine. You're not looking for it to become a flour. So that's why I prefer if I don't have it to cut them on a cutting board. I have here two eggs at room temperature and the cream cheese is also at room temperature. My cream cheese does tend to be softer than like the brick that you'll find in the supermarket of full fat cream cheese, but you still want it at room temperature so that things will blend together more easily. I have here one Granny Smith apple and I have peeled and then thinly sliced that. I cut it into quarters to be able to just slice the core out of there rather than trying to get all nitpicky about it. It's just quicker that way. Then I'll show you like some video probably here of me doing that. So I cut them up into thin slices and then there's a teaspoon of lemon juice that I tossed them in just to keep them from browning. In the original recipe, I had taken the lemon juice and put it in some water to make acidulated water, they call it. But you really don't have to go through the fuss of the water because then you have to like drain out the apples and it's just easier just to toss them in the lemon juice. So I cut out a step there. I have here one half cup plus three tablespoons of sugar replacement. 
I am using the all-purpose in the raw. I've switched from Swerve, but you can use whatever one you want as long as it's a one-to-one -one swap for sugar. One half cup is going to go into the cheesecake and these three tablespoons are gonna go on the topping. So in the recipe, it does say a half a cup plus three tablespoons divided. Whenever you see divided in a recipe, that just means it's gonna be going into different parts of the recipe. Don't put it all in at once. I have here two sheets of graham crackers. And what I did was I put them in a plastic baggie. And again, I'll show you here what I did. And I just smashed them with a rolling pin so I could get some nice crumbs. You don't want them too fine, which is why I wouldn't suggest a food processor. Again, just like the oatmeal. I mean, it's quick. You could even do it with your hands. Just put them in a baggie and crumple them up with your hands until they're the texture that you want. But I like having a little bit of texture of that is gonna go on our topping for our crisp. I have here three tablespoons of flour that is gonna go into the cheesecake to help it set up. I have here one teaspoon of vanilla extract and one half teaspoon of cinnamon. And I have here my spray butter. What we're going to do is, because we're not doing this as a typical cheesecake where you have graham cracker under the bottom because I didn't wanna use up all my bites or points making a graham cracker crust. So that's why I'm using it as a topping and I'm going to spray it with some spray butter just to give it some of that buttery flavor that you would get from a crust. So those are the ingredients. Now let me shuffle a few things around and we will get started. Okay, so the first two quick things that we're going to do, we're going to add our cinnamon in with our sugar replacement, just the three tablespoons and whisk that together. And then we're going to set that aside because as I said, this is going on the top and we are going to take our oatmeal and graham crackers and we are going to combine the two of those as well and just whisk those together. It doesn't have to be too, too precise. You just want to get it combined so that the oats are interspersed with the graham cracker pretty evenly. And that looks pretty good right there. So that's going to be set aside. All right, now let me get my big bowl and we will move on to the cheesecake. Okay, so I did spray my pie plate pretty heavily with the cooking spray. There's not going to be a crust, so you wanna make sure that you can cut it and get that out. So I make sure I spray it rather heavily with the cooking spray. Now I'm going to take my Greek yogurt cream cheese and I started this the other day and I ended up getting a little over 16 ounces by starting with about 23, 24 ounces. So, and I use the Faye Zero. Some Greek yogurts may have more water content than others. I use the Faye, which is pretty firm to begin with and that took about 24 ounces. So you may have to do a little extra if your Greek yogurt is particularly watery, but that's how much it took for me to get that 16 ounces. Add in the egg, the half cup of sugar replacement, three tablespoons of flour, and the vanilla. Now all we're gonna do is bun this together, and I usually like to, if there's flour in here, kind of like get it a little damp so it doesn't make a little cloud all around. And then I'm just gonna beat this until it's smooth and uniform. Okay, so that only took about 30 seconds to get it to this nice consistency that we have here. Now I'm going to take my pie plate and put the cheesecake filling in here. Gotta to try to do it with the wrong hand because my camera is now on that side of the counter. So I need to make sure you can see what I'm doing with my overhead shots. So I'm using my left hand, which is not my predominant hand. Okay, then I'm just going to spread it out into an even layer in my pie plate here. Just try to get it as even as possible. And that looks good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is bring on our apples and we're just going to layer those on top. You can do a fancy design if you want. You can do it however you want, but you just want like an even layer on top. And these are thinly sliced so that they can cook while the cheesecake here is cooking. <laughs> I'm going to do a second row covering up where the first two meet so that they're not like right on top of each other. And you may have some apple left over from doing this. You don't have to use all of it, especially my apple was a little large. So you don't have to go overboard. 
And again, as I said, you don't even have to use apples. Okay, I think that looks pretty good right there. Now what I'm gonna do is sprinkle on our cinnamon sugar and get those apples nicely seasoned because this is going to give us our apple crisp flavor. Now, if you were doing a different fruit, you could change up the spice that you put in here. You don't even have to put in a spice necessarily, but if you were doing, say, blueberry, I would probably do some lemon zest instead of the cinnamon, but you just want to coat that with this whole entire mixture. Okay, now we are going to take our oat and graham mixture and sprinkle that on top. We want to get that as well coated as we can. Again, this is not only our crisp, it's also basically our crust for our cheesecake because we're, as I said, we're not putting graham crackers underneath, but we do want some of that flavor. So I'm adding it in here in the topping. Okay, now our last step, we're gonna take our spray butter and just spray all over. And the spray butter comes out to zero, so I don't mind being a little generous to make sure I get that buttery flavor. Okay, now this is gonna go into a 370 degree oven. I already have mine preheated. It's gonna go in there for about 35 to 40 minutes. What you wanna do is at about 20 minutes, check to make sure that the crisp covering here is not getting too dark. If it is, you can loosely cover it with foil. If not, just leave it and let it go, but do start checking it every five minutes or so after the 20 minute mark just to make sure that the crisp portion is not getting too dark. But this will go 35, 40 minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, there we have it. it smells absolutely delicious. That is my apple crisp cheesecake. You'll know that it's done when the center rises up to meet the edges. What I mean by that is, You'll notice when you look in at like the 20 minute mark to see if you need to cover this, which I did not. The edges will have cooked already somewhat and they'll be like risen up and the center will be kind of like a little valley. That's going to work itself out because you keep baking it and the center slowly rises. And once it's pretty much matched the level of the edges, you know that it's all set and it is ready to come out. The bad thing is, we have a long cooling time, as with any cheesecake. What we have to do now is let it sit here and cool down to room temperature about an hour or so. Then we need to refrigerate it for another two to three hours. Oh, and I did forget to mention, this is my first video of what I am calling dessert timber. I've decided that this month I'm going to be doing all sweet treats, and I do have a collab coming up on the 17th and that is going to be for a cookie swap. We have about 18 channels that are in on this and you're gonna get all sorts of cookies in time to make them for Christmas. So look forward to that. But this is my first video for Dessert Temper and this deliciousness is what you're getting. Now, when I refrigerate this, I personally don't cover it because when you cover it, there's still gonna be a little residual heat and what will happen is it will create condensation on the plastic wrap, which will soak back down. Typically on a cheesecake, I would put paper towels on the top and you could if you wanted to do it that way, but I don't want any chance of sogging up my crisp. So I refrigerate it without anything. Later, once I put it back in, I do cover it once it's fully been cooled. But to start off with, I don't. Now I'm not gonna be cutting into this just yet. Obviously it's still hot, just came out but I am gonna go over those nutrition facts, but I will show you here, you've seen it in the intro already, but I'll show you here what it looks like when you get a slice. Now I created this as eight servings. You could alter those servings if you want a bigger piece and you're still not gonna be bad on bites and points. I am on the Healthy Better Balance plan, which is the equivalent to the old WW Blue plan which I guess is now the WW points plan. If I'm incorrect on that, somebody mention it down in the comments, please. But I think the new plan, the current plan as of December, 2022 is matching the blue plan and the better balance plan on healthy app. So that is what I am basing my bites and points on. Now for one eighth of this cheesecake, it's only one better balance bite or old blue point. Now, if you wanted to be a little more generous to yourself or your guests, 
you could serve this as serving four to six and it's still only two Better Balanced Bites or Old Blue Points. So even if you wanna be a little indulgent, it's not gonna to do too much damage. Even if you're following calories, I don't think it'll be too much damage because one serving of this as serving eight would be 126 calories. And if you were following macros, the fat would be 2.2 grams, the carbs would be 15.7 grams, the fiber would be 1.2 grams, and the protein would be 10.9 grams, again for 1 8. I didn't calculate for four to six, except to check just to see how many bites or points it would be. But I mean, if you did this as a serving four, you just double those numbers. And I assume if you're doing it for a serving of six, you would add half the amount. So 126, half of that would be 63. So it'd be 189 for a sixth of this, if my math is correct. Anyway, delicious, satisfying, and definitely not bad on the bites and points and calories, and even macros, I guess. I'm not really a follower of macros, so I really don't know what are good or bad. I trust that you people who are following macros do understand whether they're good or bad macros for what you want. So I hope that you are gonna give this a try. This recipe, of course, will be linked down below in the description box. I will link directly to this recipe on my blog, as well as to the blog itself. And that way you can find any of my recipes that you're looking for. Also down there, you will find my Amazon storefront, my Built Bar rewards, my Fetch rewards. I think my skinny syrups is down there and I keep forgetting to mention that. And also my social media, both my Instagram and two Facebook groups that I am part of. So go check out the description box for all sorts of information. Underneath this video, just tap the little down arrow to open up the description box. All sorts of information for you there. And if you wouldn't mind doing the usual, like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video, such as the December cookie swap that is coming up on Saturday the 17th at 9 a.m. So get prepared for that by hitting that notification bell. But besides doing desserts this month or sweet treats, not necessarily desserts, they might be a snack. I'm also going to be throwing in a few other Christmas videos, kind of like some, making some ornaments, making some little candy sleighs, um, things like that. Also making a really quick and easy fudge and it's delicious. Not all of them will be calorie conscious, and not all of them will be edible, but they will be popping up here and there. I think I'm going to be trying for Mondays and Wednesdays, so be on the lookout for those. But again, if you hit the notification bell, you'll know when they come out. Anyway, I'm going to go let this cool down, chill up, and then we are gonna dig in. I cannot wait. So until next time, bye.